With more than 30,000 stores worldwide, Starbucks has become a multi-billion dollar franchise with an insane growth rate. This case is especially true in China and other Asian countries where the markets are comparable even to their home country in the US. But there seems to be one market in the southern hemisphere where they can't seem to penetrate. Australia To say that Australia loves coffee is an understatement. The coffee culture runs deep within Australia that the coffee industry is worth an astonishing $1.57 billion. From their first grand opening in Sydney in July 2000, Starbucks have expanded their business to more than 80 stores within the span of 8 years. Unfortunately, they were forced to close 70% of their stores in 2008, leaving them with less than 2% of the market share. So where did they go wrong? Let us look at the deep differences in coffee culture and customer behavior. Australia's coffee culture was brought in by Greek and Italian immigrants in the 40s while World War II was ending. Therefore, coffee consumers in Australia are well educated about their coffee quality. It makes them prefer handcrafted specialty coffee from their local barista rather than coffee-flavored sugary drinks that Starbucks generally serve. What puts Starbucks at further disadvantage is that they charge more than local coffee shops. It is a no-brainer for locals to enjoy a $3.5 latte from their favorite coffee shop down the streets rather than spending a $4.4 latte at Starbucks. Unlike Americans, Australians not only see coffee as a way to fulfill their daily morning coffee cravings, but they see it as a way to interact as a community. That's why most of the people would prefer to go to their local coffee shops to meet their local barista and contribute more to their local community. Another problem for Starbucks in Australia was that they expanded too drastically. By opening up new stores everywhere throughout the continent, many experts thought it was a bad marketing decision, as it would make the sense of belonging and scarcity in the customer to be lost. They should have chosen the same strategy that their fellow US companies like McDonald's and Krispy Kreme took in order to penetrate Australian local markets. They only built limited stores in some big cities where it obviously won't be enough to meet market demands. Thus, making artificial scarcity to boost market excitement and anticipation to the brands while gradually expanding to other areas. When the 2008 financial crisis hit, the situation got very bad for Starbucks Australia as they were wounded with $105 million loss and $54 million extra loans, which ultimately forced them to close 70% of their stores. They should have adapted their business model to meet the local demands, starting from extending and adding their menu with personalized espresso-based coffee that locals prefer, adjusting their pricing policies to compete with local coffee shops, and growing their stores slowly matching the demand as they expand. They can also target the international tourists who visit Australia, utilizing their strong brand image and awareness outside of the country, as Australia is one of the popular destinations for international tourists. From July 2018 to June and 2019 alone, 9 million tourists visited Australia and spent around a 40 whopping billion dollars while they were there. It is a new targetable market for them and could possibly be one of the ways to maintain their presence in Australia. They can relocate their stores near popular destinations and strategic places like shopping centers or CBD area so that tourists can enjoy their familiar frappuccino while traveling around. They can also share new experiences for their customers through collaboration with local brewers and coffee shops within their operations and marketing aspects like beans for roasting, beverage ingredients, or advertisement campaigns. Implementation of this strategy can be beneficial for both parties. It helps Starbucks maintain a fresh brand image within the locals and help emerge the brand to the markets. While local coffee shops can have the opportunity to collaborate with the world's biggest coffee retailers. Do you have any other recommendations? Leave your idea in the comment section below.